The COVID-19 virus is spreading fast in India, with over 4,000 deaths now being reported daily. This past weekend, Premier Ford announced that after assessing the supply in Ontario's hospital and intensive care units, the government is sending 2,000 ventilators to India, in addition to 3,000 ventilators sent earlier this month. A spokesperson for India's Ministry of External Affairs recently confirmed receiving an installment of 500 ventilators and thanked the government of Ontario. MPP Nina Tangri from Mississauga Streetsville joined the Consul General of India to Toronto and other MPPs to send medical equipment to India earlier this week. Thank you for talking to us, MPP Tangri. Before moving on to the help that the province is providing to India, how are we ensuring that there is an ample supply of ventilators available for the medical facilities here? So uh, what we found is that uh, we, when COVID first began, uh, we knew that there was an issue with perhaps ventilators, should we need them. So uh, we worked with many different companies, one of them being, of course, O2 in Brampton, so right here, who were very quickly retooled and started making ventilators for us. So currently we have about 7,000 of them were sitting in our warehouse unused. Um, so it just seemed like the perfect opportunity for us to, you know, really be global citizens and uh, help India in their huge dire need. And so we initially sent out 3,000 uh, ventilators just over a week ago. And then, of course, as you saw the other day, we sent an additional 2,000 ventilators. Do you know if there's any good news coming out of India and how many people have the Ontario made ventilators been able to assist so far? Well, um, these ventilators that are used, uh, they well, they will absolute minimum will be used by 5,000 people, but they can be used by others. So in addition to the ventilators that we sent out this week, we sent oxygen tanks, uh, we sent oxygen concentrators, uh, respirators. So, you know, the, so we gave them all the additional tools that they need, of course, with masks as well. Uh, so a lot of things, there were a lot of PPE kits, I think, that we also added in there. But included with that was the, the government of Saskatchewan also gave uh, 100 ICU capacity, so the very large ventilators. Uh, so they were very heavy. So because there was space on this flight, they, we were able to ship those off to India as well. So they're very welcome because they will be used in the hospitals and uh, in the ICUs where they desperately need them. Premier Ford said in a statement that ventilators will be distributed to various states across India based on the needs on the ground. Can you tell us how these needs are being assessed in a timely manner and if there will be a record of the allocation made public here? So uh, we've been working with not just the uh, the Consul General and the Ambassador here, but of course in India too. So the Indian Red Cross is facilitating um, almost all the global efforts, so from everywhere around the world, just to make sure that the anything that's being donated from uh, other jurisdictions is being fairly distributed and where it's needed most. So the first shipment that we sent was uh, more broadly distributed, but the ones that we've sent recently will be more targeted to those uh, areas where it's desperately more needed. We've seen numbers in different parts of India where the, they've they started to come down somewhat, um, but there's still some very rural areas that have a, a lot of difficulty that may not have um, the capacity that some of the larger cities have. So we wanted to make sure that uh, they're able to get to those as well. We know that the ventilators are manufactured by O2 Medical Technologies in Brampton at the cost $8,000 each. What was the process behind reaching an agreement with this specific medical technologies company? So as I mentioned earlier, so at the very beginning of uh, the COVID pandemic, um, part of my portfolio actually is life sciences sector. So I, I work with a lot of medical technology companies and O2 were one of the companies that were able to retool and uh, able to build um, these uh, ventilators for us. Uh, we wanted to make sure that if we ever, ever had the need, uh, that we had ventilators ready. We don't want to be in a, in a place where we've seen globally um, where we don't have. In the very beginning, of course, we, we talked about N95 masks constantly <clears throat> and how difficult it was for us to get them here. So we wanted to make sure that we didn't have that issue as well with uh, ventilators. So we immediately worked with O2. Uh, we provided some funding and, you know, they've been, they were excellent. They had them ready for us very quickly. They're not the only ones. There were some other companies that were able to retool. Medtronic, for example, uh, they build ventilators for the, the global community. Um, and uh, because we potentially saw the need, they gave us their intellectual property 
and passed it on to um, <clears throat> Danby, for example, is a, um, a company that makes uh, refrigerators and other appliances. So they were able to take that intellectual property and then build ventilators for us as well. So, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, Ontarians working for each other, Canadians working for each other to make sure that we had uh, those ready in the case that we needed them. Yes, and also I know that you've gotten some criticism on your Twitter account um, after you posted about this. Um, so I'm just going to talk about three tweets um, of criticism that I saw, and maybe you can address those. Uh, the first one is by someone named Mary Ellen Hamilton, and what she had to say was, uh, wait, what, but isn't Ontario in a crisis with COVID? How can we be giving away precious ventilators to other countries? We demand answers. So yes, I mean, she's a constituent of mine. I've talked to many, many times and uh, she, you know, she's very active as we know on social media, but you know, the fact of the matter was is these were uh, what we call today excess. Uh, we are not in need of them at this moment and we have the ability, should we need more, that we can have more made for us. We have to understand that we are a global community and if India and other countries are in the dire need that they are right now, we need to make sure that we can help them too. So I think it was prudent and appropriate uh, for us to send those uh, ventilators to them. Of course, it was we, we worked with the Consul General many, many many community organizations that myself included have been raising funds as well either to send to India or to have oxygen concentrators shipped to India uh, and I've been very active doing that with many organizations I myself have donated uh, sums of money with many of my friends and family uh, we need to make sure that we can help uh, as best we can it, you know what we have a lot of uh, two-way travel for example many many students come to Ontario to study and if they're coming with this new variant it's very dangerous uh, for us here too so you know if we help the global community combat COVID-19 uh, then it's it benefits all of us so our next tweet is by Beach Lover uh, who said, wait, you and Peel colleagues personally brought all those ventilators, PPE and medical supplies, or is this a form of taxpayers of Ontario? Don't take credit for something you haven't done. So absolutely, this is the government of Ontario purchased those on behalf of our taxpayers. So it's all of us uh, made this contribution. I'd never say that if this is my doing or, you know, it's uh, the premiers. It's actually the people of Ontario. The people of Ontario donated uh, all of these ventilators to India. So um, I'm very proud of that fact. I'm proud that uh, our leader worked very quickly, worked you know, very swiftly when we saw the need uh, to make sure you look, if you're going to send ventilators uh, today or you're going to send them two weeks from now, just imagine the number of lives you potentially could save. Okay, and to our last uh, tweet that we'll be reading, um, this person named Nick uh, has said, uh, Ford Nation government paid to fly all this stuff to India when the feds already had a shipment going there the same week. Maybe send everything at once, save extra costs, but no, the millions of dollar photo op is more important, right? And then he made some hashtags um, for on, <laughs> on Ontario Poly, but... Yeah, again, this is, this is, you know, I, I understand the criticism, but the fact of the matter is, is that our shipment was, uh, you know, ready. Uh, we decided we were going to send them prior to the, the federal shipment. And uh, some of the shipments that were going, some were going to Delhi, some were going to Mumbai. So we wanted to make sure, actually, this flight that left uh, this week actually flew from here to Doha. And then the crew was changing in Doha, who would take it to India and bring it back to Doha. And then the crew that left here was going to come back with that that flight. So there's a lot of logistics involved. Um, our, this flight was full it, with, with the equipment and I think the flight that left uh, uh, last week from the federal government was also very full with equipment as well. So I mean, you know, it's not a matter of, you know, that's why we took Saskatchewan, the government of Saskatchewan donated those 100 ventilators as well, with their large ICU capacity. And uh, that's why uh, we put them together rather than them sending a small flight uh, and us sending a much larger one. We had the space, so that's why we work together, which is, you know, we've been doing a lot of that throughout the pandemic. I think it's critical to make sure that all levels of government work together, uh, which we have been, 
and uh, for us in Saskatchewan to send these ventilators together, I think was very critical. Do we have enough ventilators in Ontario? Because I've heard um, some some people have to be put on oxygen because there's not enough ventilators. I've been hearing a lot of uh, like really sad stories from different doctors who work in the Toronto area and in Peel. So do we, do we have enough ventilators that we should be giving it to other countries? So the issue we have here is not so much the ventilators, it's the ICU capacity. So when we saw our numbers going up uh, and we saw a lot of people in hospital, which is why we had to ramp down elective surgeries, we needed to make sure that the ICU capacity was there in case we had a very large surge of COVID patients that needed those ICU beds. As you know, uh, from here in the GTA, we've been sending many patients, not COVID patients, but uh, other patients to uh, other hospitals in other areas of the province. And, uh, you know, that's not optimal. We don't want to be doing that, but we needed to free up those beds now. Uh, the good news is, is the ICQ, ICU capacity is slowly going down, uh, which means that we hopefully will not have to be doing that much longer. And uh, but the issue is not so much the ventilators; it was those beds that we desperately needed. We, you know, unfortunately, over the the previous 15 years in the government, the ICU capacity, our population was growing, but the Liberal government uh, was not keeping up with that growth and not uh, having additional beds in our hospitals. It it was, it put us in this huge dire situation that we're seeing today. So what you're saying is that we could have more ventilators going if we had more hospital beds. Absolutely. We, we definitely need more ICU capacity and we're doing that right now. Our government has announced uh, many, many beds across the province in many hospitals, including uh, Trillium Health Partners, William Osler uh, and many other parts of the province where we're going to have much, much more ICU capacity. So that's uh, not just ICU capacity, but uh, inpatient beds, uh, especially when someone's just had surgery, but they need to stay overnight or for a few days in hospital. Uh, we want to make sure that they're well taken care. Uh, our, you know, we have a world-class healthcare system, and we want to keep it that way. And these, these are, you know, we talked, we always uh, talked about uh, hallway healthcare uh, and how dire it was when people have to stay in, in the hallways of the hospitals waiting to see a doctor uh, in the emergency. And we want to take steps. We certainly ramped up a lot more uh, capacity in the hospitals and here at uh, Trillium uh, the new build has been approved and uh, we're going to tender right now to get those beds built very very soon. The Premier's statement also mentioned that the government is helping arrange transportation for medical supplies to India by the private sector and community organizations. Since some of our viewers may be part of these local initiatives, can you please advise how they can get in touch with the provincial government to ensure a smooth and affordable transportation of their donations? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you can always feel free to call my office at 905-569-1643 and we'll put you in touch with the right people. Uh, we have many, many organizations across the country uh, that are donating. A lot of the things that we're donating, for example, oxygen concentrators are not being shipped from Canada. So people are raising the funds. We're ordering them from other countries. And I know uh, Raj, for example, they've ordered from um, Taiwan, from China, from uh, Nairobi, I think was one of the countries, and Vietnam. So we're arranging shipments to go from those countries into India so that they can make sure that they get distributed fairly. And, and when they do reach where they go, they either the Indian Red Cross or uh, another organization will take them from there and make sure that they do get distributed where they need to go. Well, thank you so much, MPP, for joining us today. Thank you very much, Julia. Have a lovely day. You too. Thank you for watching News Talk on the international news channel of TAG TV.